there's going to be pressure and fear and anxiety and doubt and stress with anything you fucking do in life. Life is full of pressure. It's full of peaks and valleys. There's always going to be something. So since there's going to be pressure anyway, and there's going to be stress anyway, and life is going to be hard anyway as a man in these days, you might as well do you like and enjoy and think freaking big. That... What's up, freaks? Welcome to another episode of the Steve Eckert Show podcast. And today we're going to talk about this topic. We could we could go on for hours and hours and hours about. We're talking about mental toughness because really almost every episode of this podcast in some way is tied into mindset or mental toughness or uh, emotional discipline, emotional resilience. But we're going to break it down today a little bit from a different perspective. We'll hit some of the traditional ways of thinking of it just as a refresher for you maybe, but we're going to hit it from a, a different perspective. So you really think of this mental toughness as a, a whole different game, a whole different approach, a whole different way of operating and living your freaking life. So what I think, what to me, what mental toughness really is, is the crossing the boundaries, the, the combination of emotional discipline and emotional resilience and emotional so emotional discipline is keeping yourself centered staying in the middle we call we call it in our terminology staying in the green if you watch there's an entire episode we have on emotional discipline so go check that one out so we don't need to go so deep into just emotional discipline we're going to touch on it here today but emotional discipline is staying centered staying on track staying focused within the boundaries not getting too high not getting too low not getting knocked off course but in reality, in the real fucking world, you are going to get knocked off course. And that's where emotional resilience comes into place. That bounce back ability, able to get back to center when you do get knocked off course, whether it's too high with too much too much confidence or complacency or too low with too much anger and fear and rage and, and making irrational decisions. So that emotional resiliency brings you back to center. So combining that emotional discipline with the emotional resiliency to bring you back to center is the overall way that I want you to think of and look at mental toughness. And what I call mental toughness is a different level. When I start thinking of it that way, that's what I call freak fortitude. That is our freakified version of mental toughness is having that freak fortitude, that balancing of the line, that combination, that synergistic attack between emotional discipline and emotional resilience. Now, what are the ingredients of that? Let's give you a quick overview of, of this whole freak fortitude concept, and we're going to dive into it from there. So freak fortitude is the having preparation plus practice plus failure plus followed up by success plus learning plus then teaching what you're learning, and that's going to equal courage and confidence, and that is freak fortitude. All of that molded and balled up together creates a freak fortitude that we're talking about, this mental toughness that we're talking about. So that's how I want you to think of this. I want this to drill into your head, this freakified version of mental toughness. And part of mental toughness really is just knowing who the fuck you are and what you stand for. When you know who you are and what you stand for, it's easy to have a a high level of mental fortitude because you can't, it's hard to knock you off track too often. I mean, no matter who you are, you're going to get knocked off track, but you're going to have that resilience and bounce back ability to get back to center. But knowing who the hell you are and what you stand for is huge in having mental toughness, in this freak fortitude, emotional discipline, emotional resilience. I'm going to keep repeating those to drill them into your freaking head throughout this episode. But also mental toughness, if you have gratitude and we have a whole nother episode on gratitude a couple we've mentioned gratitude pretty often but gratitude for what you have and acknowledgement for what you've achieved your victories the shit you've done in life that leads to mental toughness that makes it so you can stay centered and when you do get knocked off track you have strong bounce back immediate bounce back automatic bounce back ability because you do have gratitude for the shit that you already have and 
acknowledgement for what you've already achieved or what you, you have achieved and the victories that you have in life at this point. So let me tell you, let, let's talk a, bit, a little bit about what freak fortitude is not. Well, first off, good decisions are rarely freaking made when you feel like shit about yourself and you're having self-doubt and fear and f- worried about failure or you're just coming off a loss or you're tired or overwhelmed or have anxiety or fucking burned out. It's Im- impossible to make good decisions in that, in that case. And it's impossible to have this freak fortitude in, the, in, that, in those states. So part of freak fortitude is like always to go back to the daily disciplines, those foundational habits, those non-negotiables is always going to be the foundation to everything when it comes to discipline, when it comes to mental toughness, freak fortitude, emotional discipline, resilience, all that stuff. Because this burnout, the self-doubt and fear and thoughts of failure and past failures, that type of fatigue, that type of burning yourself out, that type of stress makes a fucking coward out of anybody. So how could you have fortitude? It's, it's fatiguing the shit out of you mentally and emotionally. So it's impossible to have mental toughness when you're in those states. And you go into those loops, those toxic thoughts that, you know what? People with freak fortitude and with mental toughness do not have. They block this shit out. Things like, oh, it's, it's just predetermined that it's going to happen. Like you're, it's a foregone conclusion that, that you need to realize your legacy, your goals, your dreams, your ideal lifestyle is in your fucking hands. And that's where you need to think about it. It's not predetermined. It's not set. It's not fixed because of where you came from or your initial basic skill set or whatever. Shit is all learnable. This is all freaking learnable and teachable and improvable when we're talking about freak fortitude and mental toughness. You're not just born with this shit. It takes, again, that's why I went, that, that the ingredients were practice, preparation, failure, success, learning, teaching, confidence, courage. All this is trainable. And all this shit is teachable. So then thinking that you, you don't, you're not going to have what it takes because of where you are in life or it's predetermined, whatever, that's fucking bullshit. Or you use the terms like always and never. Those are two words we don't, won't use in our house. Always and never. You can say pretty often or you could say most of the time maybe, but to say always or never, such definitive statements Oh, I always have a hard time with this. Oh, I'll never be able to make that amount of money. Oh, I'll always be fat or whatever you want to say. And it just makes you think in your head. They have no control over yourself, over the situation or the circumstances, no control at all. When you do have absolute fucking control over those thoughts in your head and the way that you're thinking and the way you're talking about not saying always and never. Replace always and never with even and yet. And we've talked about even and yet before in the past. Actually, one of my words of the year for, for this year, 2024, it's throwing the word even before anything and throwing the word yet after other things like I'm not, I don't have a six pack abs yet. I don't make a million dollars a year yet. I don't have that dream house yet. Or I don't have kids yet. I'm not married yet, whatever it is. Or I could be in even better husband, even better father, even better leader, even better man. I could make even more money. I could make an even bigger impact. I could be in even better shape. I can get an even faster mile runtime. Replace always and never with even and yet. And, and it's going to change the game and just the way you approach it and you're reframing the way you operate. And thinking that your past and the, and the fuck ups and failures of the past, another of the toxic traits of the men who lack this freak fortitude, this mental toughness, they think that their past freaking defines them. They think their past equals their future. Your past does not equal your fucking future. Unless you let it, your past might be a, a, less, a learning lesson for your upcoming future, but your, it is not locked and set in stone. And your emotions aren't either. You can control your emotions. You decide what emotional reactions you have in different situations. That is up to you about how you respond and react to things. And you already know that. We talk about it a lot on the show. You hear it about a lot in personal development world. And there's, there's going to, listen, you don't want those traits of this toxic bitch-ass man. And we've talked about that in previous episodes also. And then there's upcoming episodes on really why men have gone so soft. Men haven't just gone soft. They've also gone weak. 
and gone stupid. And that is a, that causes a lack of this fortitude, a lack of this mental toughness, of this resilience, of this willpower, if you want to throw it in there. And this shit is, again, all workable, all trainable, all freaking learnable, all improvable. But here's the thing. There's going to be pressure and fear and anxiety and doubt and stress with anything you fucking do in life. Life is full of pressure. It's full of peaks and valleys with any career, any relationship, any business, your, your own health, your, your, even your body, your weight, the way you look, sometimes even the way you feel. There's going to be ups and downs. There's going to be peaks and valleys. There's going to be full of pressure and anxiety, fear, doubt, stress. When it comes to your health issues again, your, your kids turning into teenagers, your, your spouse, your neighbors, broken down car, bro, r- torn off roof off the house, whatever it is, the weather, there's always going to be something. So since there's going to be fucking pressure anyway, and there's going to be stress anyway, and life is going to be fucking hard anyway as a man in these days, you might as well do shit that you like and enjoy and think freaking big. That's part of freak fortitude. That's the kind of flipping the script that we're talking about, a different way of thinking about mental toughness. Like shit's going to be fucked up anyway. Shit's going to, and you might think that sounds like pessimistic. Shit's going to be fucked up anyway. Shit's going to be hard. It's going to be difficult. But here's the thing. As a man in today's world, pain is guaranteed, but suffering is optional. Pain is permanent, motherfucker. You need to know when it comes to freak fortitude, You need to know that pain is is not just temporary. I know where they say pain is temporary and the results are forever. No, no, no. Pain is permanent. And pain is also guaranteed. But the suffering associated with that pain is optional. That's your decision. That's in your control. You can't control the pain. You can control how you deal with it. The suffering is the optional part. The suffering is where you get to choose and control about. And this goes back to when it comes to mental toughness and free fortitude is, is again, having that discipline, having that energy, having that confidence and courage, the way you show up, the way you approach things, because you already know that shit's going to be fucked up. You already know you're going to meet a lot of assholes in your day. You already know you're going to meet a lot of, run into a lot of haters online. So what are you going to do? You're not going to leave your house. You're not going to go on social media because there's fucking haters. Like that is mental toughness right there. Just dealing with the assholes in your life. The actual legitimate assholes. I know I say it all the time. I'm the asshole everyone needs in their life because I do have a have goals that to go and help them see what they can't see themselves to unlock the the potential that's in these men that we do in the Freak Father Alliance, the men's mentorship group coaching program. Yeah, I'm the asshole those men need in their life to take their lives to the next level to become even better husbands, fathers, leaders, and fucking men. But there are true legitimate assholes out in this world and there are a lot of them. So already knowing that you're going to deal with those kind of people on a daily basis, you're probably not going to avoid them. At some point, you're going to deal with them already knowing that, already knowing the day is going to be hard. Some fucked up shit's probably going to happen. There's probably going to be some drama and stress and chaos. There's going to be tough conversations to be had. There's going to be uncomfortable situations. There's going to be some hard shit you're going to have to do at least every week. Like when you expect that chaos... And stress always, but then you always just need to be prepared to expect and and make it your bitch. Make that chaos your bitch. Make the hardship, the, the struggle, the pain, the suffering, make it your bitch. You decide on the suffering. You control the suffering. You just don't control the hard shit. And another part of mental toughness and this freak fortitude. I told you, I want you to think of this from a different way, not the same generic ways that you're thinking about mental toughness or whatever, but when you don't take shit so serious and you just have a little fun, not giving a fuck and having fun and having a sense of humor, those are actually two upcoming episodes of the Steve Eckert show is literally a sense of humor and then having fun. When you live that way where you really just don't give a fuck about shit that doesn't matter, about some losers commenting on the internet. Some guy today, just right before we came on, just minutes ago, um, we're setting up for the the show. I'm getting my phone set up and I see a a comment on Instagram. I just immediately block and delete the loser, but it's just a quick little fitness circuit doing a few exercises. They're very simple exercises. There's not much difficulty in the technique. And the comment was, 
your form is dog shit. Like that was a comment from someone who has a, a, a faked account and then says, why are you wearing two shoes like a child or something? Two different color shoes like a child. That doesn't even warrant a response from me. It just gets a block and a delete if I don't see it first. Mental toughness is a superpower. Freak fortitude is a superpower to be able to see that and not feel the need to respond to it. And the only reason, only way I'm going to use it, actually weaponize it to use it as a lesson here when we're talking about mental toughness. And Tyson also has access to my Instagram and he sees these messages if he doesn't delete them or block them before I do. And he sees them. So he sees what is out there and is prepared to deal with it also as a young man growing up in this fucking wacky world that we're in. Like these are all lessons. Like taking stupid shit like that and using it as a lesson for myself, as training for my own mental toughness, but also as a teaching lesson for my my kids. Like, don't take shit so serious. Like, don't give a fuck about stupid shit. Have a sense of humor. Have some fucking fun. But be prepared for whatever the fuck's going to go on. That was one of the first ingredients that I said in the very beginning of this show was preparation, being prepared. Because... Hal Moore, the Mel Gibson played him in We Were Soldiers. And he was a lieutenant colonel, I think, in the army during Vietnam. He said, the only thing wrong when nothing is wrong is that nothing's wrong. That's a a different way of thinking of mental toughness and preparation. That's the freakified version. That's the freak fortitude version right there. That the only thing wrong when nothing is wrong is that nothing's wrong which is why when there is nothing wrong, when there's nothing hard or difficult going on, we manufacture adversity. That's why we do hard shit on a regular basis. We constantly push ourselves to the edge as a man and of what, the edge of what you think is possible of doing. And then we push just a little bit further, not over the edge, but just a little bit further. That's where the freak flow happens. That's where freak fortitude is forged. You are forging the freak fortitude on that edge, the deepest, darkest, craziest version of the edge where you're ready to tip over of the freak flow. You are forging this freak fortitude that we're talking about. And and you need to just continue to be relentless and vicious and violent in your daily disciplines and your habits and your non-negotiables. And stop fucking calling them non-negotiables if they're negotiable. Non-negotiable means no matter what. That is part of this freak fortitude, how you have this mental toughness, how shit bounces off you. You become bullshit bulletproof when you're thinking this way. You need to be vicious and violent in your daily disciplines and your daily habits, your non-negotiables. They're not called, most men call them non-negotiables, but they are usually just very fucking negotiable. They call them daily disciplines, but they're really eh, three to four time a week disciplines instead of daily. Daily habits are once in a while, habits and tasks. And you need to get obsessed with those habits instead of the outcomes. There are no outcomes without these daily disciplines. There is no mental toughness. There is no freak fortitude. There is no resilience and discipline without being obsessed with these daily habits of yours, these daily disciplines, these non-negotiables that we're talking about. And listen, most, most people have no idea how much pressure they can actually fucking take until they're forced to. So why not build on that and make that even better? People don't understand how many obstacles they can overcome. They think they just crumble under the pressure. They don't even try it. They don't even fight through it. Like how many times can you get knocked the fuck down and still get the hell up? There's nothing stopping you. That's again, the suffering is optional. The pain is permanent and guaranteed. The suffering is optional and your fucking choice. You have complete control over the suffering. Now, backing down and quitting and and playing it safe becomes easier and easier and easier. And that then becomes a habit also. Don't make no mistake. You could have shitty fucking habits just like you could have positive habits like these daily disciplines, this mental toughness, this freak fortitude that we're talking about. But this all starts with your belief that you have what it takes. You can handle whatever challenge comes your way, whatever roadblock comes your way. And that meant belief and, and the courage and confidence to fucking attack it as a man to whatever comes your way, whatever you need to fucking deal with, knowing that you could keep going and that you could go further and you could go to that edge and you go to beyond that edge, go to where other fucking men are not willing to go do the shit other men are not willing to do, to deal with the pain that other men cannot endure. That is freak fortitude. 
And once you believe that and attack that way every fucking day and show up that way to every situation, every room you enter, every meeting, every, every event, every relationship, the outcomes take care of themselves. Because mental toughness is a choice. It's a choice. Success is a choice. It's, it's in your control. And they're also optional. You can opt out of success. You can opt out of, of freak fortitude and mental toughness. There's no gift to it. There's no entitlement to it. There's no fucking luck to it. When shit goes downhill, it's not bad luck. You used to re- just recognize that setbacks are only temporary, that the pain and the disappointment and the loss and the failure, the problems, the hard times, the slow times, this adversity, this particular type of pain and situation is just temporary and fucking limited but still keep the big picture in mind and stay obsessed with the habits that day and in the moment and through the hard times and through the, the, the suffering and the hardships. That shit is not permanent or at least not that version of the pain and, and suffering is not permanent. There will be some kind of form of permanent pain and permanent hardship you need to deal with. It's just never as big or as hard as you fucking think it is or gonna last as long as you think it's gonna be. So don't make excuses or validation or blame anyone else for your fucking problems. Men who have freak fortitude, men who are mentally tough and have this mental strength, don't make excuses or look for validation or approval seeking or groveling little bitches or blame anyone else for their problems. The world doesn't owe you shit. You have to go out there and get it and create it and fucking build it and attack it. And this is all going to prevent you. If you don't, it's going to prevent you from, from attacking these obstacles with this free fortitude. But these things we're talking about are going to help you blast through these obstacles that you have complete control of. These are a choice. Like again, you have to believe in yourself, in your abilities to, the, to, to attack these hardships, these obstacles, these roadblocks, these little speed bumps, little fucking pebbles in the road. Have the, because con- listen, mental toughness and free fortitude really comes down to discipline, your energy, and your confidence. If you have those things, you have mental strength, you have mental toughness, you have this freak fortitude. Those are sort of part of the foundation of this freak fortitude. And a huge part of that is having the discipline and energy to create this confidence and courage. Confident people build up a strong belief in their ability to get shit done, to make things happen, no matter what, to get through shit. Like, don't have to, don't have to worry about what might go wrong because they know they're going to get through it no matter what. So then they can focus on what they need to be doing right now in the fucking present moment. That's the way you need to think about it. And when things do get knocked off, off course, that resilience helps you regroup and adapt and get back on track. And instead of just giving up at the first sign of failure, people with freak fortitude, with this level of confidence, just see setbacks as a little minor stepping stone in the long road to success or any change that that needs to be made. Any change in life is not the end of the fucking world. And approaching that with a different mentality of this is going to be fucking awesome. This is right where I need to be right now. This is a stepping stone to the next big thing. And then when you do fuck up or whatever, analyze and learn from those mistakes. Adapting, again, having that resilience, that bounce back ability to adapt and overcome and, and approach it to prevent this kind of shit from happening again in the future and the next thing you're going to do. And this, this just happened with, with Tyson. Tyson just spoke at the Squire program. I don't know if I had a Squire shirt on today, but he just spoke for the first time in front of a group. There was over 20-something fathers and sons there, so 40, 40 50 people. And then there's instructors and visitors and 50, 60 people total at the event. He spoke to the broke when we break him off. He spoke to the sons for about a 20-minute talk on seven ways to improve your relationship with your father. And, and the Squire program, if you don't know, is a father-son program for young men from 12 to 16, kind of a rite of passage experience that they go through with their father, a full long day event, 15-hour event, uh, a rite of passage, just a, a connecting, bonding experience to the father and son that we facilitate here in California and now in several locations around the country. But Tyson had a talk for this. His first time ever going to be speaking, doing public speaking, if you want to call it. And they say the biggest fear is public speaking. Now, he's talked before. We do a podcast together and he speaks on there just fine. Of course, it's always improving. We're always looking to improve in our communication skills. But he had to do a, he was doing a, a, a test run just for us 
closed doors, not recording it in front of the family in one of our family meetings. Just a practice, a little practice run through. And it was a little rocky, a little bumpy, a little freezing, a little shutting down, a little too inside your own head of those things that I talked about in the beginning of, of the things that men who lack freak fortitude do. Some of that stuff got caught in your own head. And it happens to all of us. It happens to us men every day in one way or the other. That fear and doubt and procrastination and what ifs and what if this and what if that. And I don't know what to do. I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy. I don't have what it takes. All this bullshit fucking stories we tell ourselves in our head that take away from this mental toughness. It's like that battle of good and evil inside your fucking head. And he kind of shut down and froze and we just had to stop for the day and tried again like two or three days later, which then he did it fine two or three days later. But before he tried it again, we, uh, we had a meeting, a one-on-one meeting, a little pop-up one-on-one meeting. And we go into the meeting and I turn on a movie, Eight Mile with Eminem. He's like, what the, what the hell are we doing? I almost said, what the F? But he wouldn't say that because he's not allowed to say that. He's like, what the hell are we doing? I put on the beginning of Eminem, the beginning part where he has the rap battle. And the guy talks all this shit about him and then it's his turn to go and he He's in the locker room. He pukes before he goes out there because he's all nervous and it's a big crowd and he's the only white guy there. And it's a, and he goes out there and he completely freezes, doesn't say a word and just storms off stage and he thinks it's the end. But when it comes down to it, he was already probably the, one of the best rappers that there were at the point, at this point, probably already was. And still he even froze up. So Tyson and I watched this scene and then we fast forward all the way to the end where he's uh, doing the final rap battle and complete 180 turn, a U-turn, showing who he really is, what he really is fucking capable of, that he is worthy, that he does belong there. And not only belong there, he's taking fucking control. He is taking over the damn game. And he, he attacks it, he kills it, he wins the rap battle after bouncing back, after in that same place against the same opponent, he completely shut down and froze before. So we went over that. It was an, a pretty cool little lesson we used, a movie to, to teach it. And then so Tyson went on to the Squire program, and, and did awesome doing his 20-minute talk. And of course, then there's still places for improvement. But taking and regrouping and adapting and overcoming and bounce back ability is part of this freak fortitude. That was a perfect example right there. Other ways to have this mental strength and this freak fortitude is not wait. Take the fucking initiative. Take the action. Confident people don't wait for permission to take action. They don't wait for someone to give the go-ahead. Whether it's taking charge in a situation, they are going the extra fucking mile to solve a problem. Just a proactive, drive forward, attack, get shit done, fucking kill mindset. That's what they're doing. Taking the initiative and not seeking validation from anywhere else but inside yourself. That is the, the, the part of the foundation. That's what we started in the beginning, that belief you could do it. Not that seeking validation from anywhere else or relying on constant praise or, or external motivation, external validation from anywhere until you at least get it from yourself. Then maybe you can seek it from the important few people in your life that you should have that type of respect and trust for. But men with freak fortitude with this mental strength, they trust their own freaking abilities and, and understand there's going to be criticism, but that doesn't affect their confidence at all. If anything, it boosts their confidence knowing, all right, I have all this bullshit coming my way, all this craziness that will come in my way, and I'm still taking the initiative, still getting my validation for myself, still feeling good about myself and confidence. It's actually boost their confidence is boosting its own confidence because you're not letting that drag you down. It's like, fuck, I could deal with this. Again, I'm bullshit bulletproof. That is part of mental strength. That is part of the freak fortitude, being bullshit bulletproof so that you could take these immediate actions and take the initiative we're talking about and not procrastinating and putting shit off. Also, part of a huge part of this freak fortitude, again, is embracing yourself, who the fuck you are, what you stand for, what you're about, what you believe, not worried about comparing yourself to other people or worried about what those other people think you, like we already said, but embracing you, embracing your fucking self and who you are and what you're made of and what you're capable of and knowing what your potential is. That's a huge part of this freak fortitude. 
not comparing and worried about what people are doing on the internet because I guarantee fucking see the majority of those people that you look on the internet you're like wow look at this person on the internet with all this success and these great relationships and great marriages and all these cars and money and great businesses I guarantee you most of the time you don't know shit about that motherfucker and behind the scenes they are probably 10 times more miserable and fucked up than you are. That if you had someone pull the curtain up like the fucking Wizard of Oz, you'd see the truth. You'd be like, oh, no thanks. I'll just keep my life over here. I'd much rather have my life than that person who you were putting on a pedestal. So don't put these motherfuckers on a pedestal. Another way to have this freak fortitude is to accept again that there's going to be conflict. There's going to be tough conversations. There's going to be tough situations. There's going to be shit you're going to have to deal with. And not sh- running away from and hiding out from conflict and avoiding those tough conversations. Men with freak fortitude understand this is just an opportunity for freaking growth. They manage conflict this way. Not only manage it, they actively seek it. They don't just avoid it. They seek it so they could deal with it so it's not lingering and weighing down on them. Which goes into one of the, the final steps is being that comfortable in that pain so that you're not suffering more than is needed or intended. Get comfortable with the uncomfortable like you've heard before. Confident people recognize that that's where the growth is, is in that pain, in that hardship, in that way outside of the comfort zone that you hear everyone talk about. And they seek them out, regular basis, daily fucking basis, embracing this this discomfort personally and professionally, seeking for hard shit to do not just in your personal life and in the gym and in fitness, but also in the professional life. Mike Tyson jumping up and, and speaking on that stage. This is all part of mental strength, mental toughness, freak fortitude. This is what grit really is. And people say, I'm grinding, I'm grinding, I got to grind. Grinding is having to deal with like perseverance without the passion. Or being good at something and have proficiency without passion. That's the difference between grind and grit. Grit is perseverance with the passion. It's proficiency with the passion. That is grit. That's where you want to be. That's the angle of this freak fortitude. So we're going to look at this a little different way. Grit is part of the mental strength. A combination of passion and and vicious tenacity and the stamina and endurance that allows you to stick through it, through the bullshit, through the ups, the downs, the peaks, the valleys, until your goals and your lifestyle that you want to fucking live become a reality. Where you just keep fighting, even when you're defeated, it doesn't matter. Where you are not worried about it and you can delay gratification as long as it fucking takes to get to where you know you need to be, want to be, and fucking deserve to be. That's what Freak fortitude is about. That's how you become unbeatable. That's how you become uncancelable, if that's even a fucking word. So here's what I want you to just take this checklist to kind of finish off is don't stay in your fucking little comfort, comfortable zone. Don't give in to the freaking fear. Have the faith over the fear. Don't stop believing that you have what it fucking takes. Don't let the opinions of other people stop you from chasing your goals and your dreams and your legacy and the lifestyle you want to live. Don't beg for attention and approval no matter what's going on, no matter where it's coming from. Don't avoid tough situations and tough conversations and pretend it doesn't exist and hide out. Don't be fucking close-minded to different opportunities and situations and possibilities. Don't be threatened by other fucking people that are uh, above you or better than you or where you want to be. Also, don't hold back people that are trying to get to where you are. These are all parts of mental toughness about this freak fortitude that make you just, again, if, if anything, I'd say freak fortitude may, is being bullshit bulletproof. Don't fight the change. Don't fight when, when shit needs to change, even though you think maybe you failed and you have to go in a different direction. Sometimes di- there's a difference between failure or a difference between quitting and need for change. Sometimes you need for a change. If you close a business, it's not that necessarily that you quit, it's that you needed some change. So how do you prepare for it? Expect problems, expect pain, expect hardship, expect to be attacked, expect for there to be air assholes around, expect for the invasion to come, but then expect 
to overcome it. Expect to make the suffering optional. The pain is permanent and guaranteed. The suffering is optional and controllable. So carry this edge of this freak fortitude everywhere you go, personally and professionally. This is the freak edge. It's the freak fortitude. And this is what we work in on a daily basis in the Freak Father Alliance. That's a men's mentorship group coaching program where I help entrepreneurial fathers and men to develop a no excuses mindset so they can build more muscle, make more money, have more meaning so that they can attack their mission to create their ideal lifestyle and time freedom for your families. So I want to hear your stories about how you demonstrate on a regular basis this different angle, this different level of freak fortitude. I want to know what does mental toughness mean to you? Put in the comments down below. I will see you next time on The Steve Eckert Show. And in case no one told you yet today, you are fucking awesome. No excuses.